This little module is very nice. It's an SP002E and it's basically a self-contained controller for these sort of pixel LEDs, the WS2812B or the WS2811 style uh, pixels that take a serial data line and they basically collect data as it's transmitted. So the first three bytes will be taken by the first LED, then it continues the data path to the next LED and then the next one. And each one takes three bytes that sets an intensity of red, green and blue. And after a, uh, it's sent all the data in, it pauses the data stream briefly and that transfers it out to the LEDs. So you can basically run huge strings of LEDs from that. The downside of these uh, LEDs is that the, the need for the data to be smashed out at very high speed uh, is quite significant. It takes a lot of processing power, which means that in the case of this one, because they've used a generic little microprocessor, they've sort of compromised. They've reduced the number of intensity steps and they've used clever software to try and cheat that. Uh, so let me show you these, what they look like, by turning the light off. Uh, I'll focus down there first. Turn the light off. And this is my favourite effect of this. This is just a short section of LEDs that can actually run quite significant strings. This one sort of chases a rainbow across them. And when I select, uh, you, can, you get seven speeds, but you can also... Uh, select patterns. So this is a sort of fairly crude flashing pattern, uh, sweeping reds, sweeping greens. This is a common thing that it's got a pattern but then it repeats it in multiple colours. So if I keep uh, clicking through this, uh, you'll see it go into the next style of pattern which is uh, chasing multiple sections of colour along. It's quite neat. Right, tell you what, uh, I'm going to bring the light back and we shall take a look at this controller. The light is back and the module is set at my favourite effect, which is that basic chasing rainbow. It's very common, but you know, it's quite pleasing. So I'm going to unplug this now and unplug the connector. I have adapted it here. I've been uh, using this to drive uh, ma many different types of these LEDs. And uh, as such, I put my own usual little three pin Molexi style connector on. But the module itself, let's take a look at that a close up because I've already taken a picture of it. So let's bring that in and sit it down here and explore. I've also reverse engineered it. I've got this schematic. It's not hugely complex. All the work is being done. Oh, let's go a little bit closer. All the work is being done by this microcontroller here. So what do we have? We have the power come in, which goes on the back of the circuit board across two big bus bars and it goes straight back out. There's also a thin track uh, going between these middle data pads, which means that all you need to connect this to the strings of LEDs, it doesn't need to go through the circuit board. You can literally just have three connections at this end connected to the actual string or the tape or whatever you have with those LEDs. It has a very rudimentary power supply. It has the microcontroller itself. It has three buttons pulling the input pins down to the zero volt rail. And then it has a couple of 100 ohm resistors and output. It's got the facility for data and clock. So it's not just designed for the WS2811 LEDs. It can also do something like the APA102, which use the, the data and the clock, which are much less demanding than the processors. Not a lot to see here. Let me bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. Let's go over it. Here's a bus bar rail going through. It can be anything between five to 24 volts. Uh, the current draw of the circuitry is only about three milliamps. Uh, it doesn't drive the LEDs directly itself. All it does is put data out. And that means they've used a very basic voltage regulator based around discrete components. They've got a 3K resistor from the positive rail going to a Zener diode to create a rough voltage about, at, well, at five volts. I had measured 4.4 volts on here, that voltage might vary with uh, the uh, supply voltage as more current flows through the Zener diode because Zener diodes don't just decisively have a fixed voltage. It varies slightly if it's, the current is very low. Uh, that uh, puts a voltage, a current limited supply onto the base of this transistor. When the current flows through this polarity protection diode, through the transistor, it charges up this capacitor, and when the capacitor reaches, in this case, about 3.7 volts, which is roughly 
it will be that's about 0.7 volts below uh, the base here. That's how these regulators work. So it's put 4.4 volts in here. As soon as the voltage is within about 0.6-ish volts of the base, then the transistor starts turning off because it needs the 0.6 volts between the base and emitter to turn on. And it just basically goes into a linear uh, region and it generates a nice stable voltage. There's a little capacitor there, but there's also a decoupling capacitor across the microcontroller itself. That's that little one, just mounted locally. Uh, maybe you can deduce the one, two, three, four, five, six, pin seven uh, and pin nine of a 20 pin microcontroller are negative and positive respectively. Maybe you can deduce what that is. It's a mysterious chip. Uh, the secret sauce of this whole controller is what's in that chip. There are two 100 ohm resistors. There they are there. One for data, one for clock. In this case, only one of them is used. Uh, they have got the extra pads here so that if you have a four pin cable coming on, you can go on to positive uh, clock data and uh, zero volts. But in this case, they've gone to these three pins for the connection output, which is just using the data. Um, that is more or less it. The resistors are to provide some basic protection against that being shorted to the zero volt rail. If they get shorted to five volts outputs, it wouldn't potentially be too bad. But if they get shorted to 24 volts, uh, it could cause spicy moments, this microcontroller. The three buttons are just connect to the zero volt rail, two resistance output, basic power supply, that's it. In a way, I wish they'd used a voltage regulator because it would potentially have... It, well, would it have simplified things? Maybe it was just uh, they wanted a, as close to 5 volts as they could get. They could have used a 4.4 volt regulator, but they didn't. Um, maybe they just wanted a bit above 3.3 .3 volts. I'm not sure why they went for the discrete uh, regulator. It seems like a sort of, well, cheapness, presumably. That's the only reason I can think. Um, but there we have it. That's all there really is to it. The... Magic is in the software on the chip and the magic for the LEDs themselves is in the circuitry that's built into each LED that takes the data and then passes it on to the next. But it's a very simple and interesting little circuit and it has its applications where you just want, uh, like for those instance, those pixel style LEDs, you want to make a sign where you just have running rainbow dots and that is all. Just set the speed, set the pattern and fit and forget. It's quite neat. Not bad at all.